Welcome to History Sleuth, a podcast exploring the involvement of history and culture in current events. My name is Adelaide, and this is the second part of last week's episode, where I am joined by the officers of the OU History Club, and we break down a video from PragerU called, If You Live in Freedom, Thank the British Empire. But before we get into that, or back into that, if you're on Twitter, follow me at Sleuth History to get updates about when I post new episodes and be part of the community. Make sure also to follow History Sleuth on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, getting back to where we left off, we had just finished breaking apart part of PragerU's argument about the slave trade, and we were about to listen to the rest of their argument on that. So here that is. Let's listen. Okay, let's keep going. The British Treasury spent enormous sums to liberate slaves and compensate slave owners in the Caribbean. The Royal Navy had as a primary duty the eradication of the slave trade, and in fact abolishing the slave trade became a major factor driving the expansion of the British Empire. The British enforced a Pax Britannica, putting down pirates, taming headhunters, and keeping the peace between previously warring tribes and religions. While respecting, and often ruling through, local leaders, the British still insisted on certain Judeo-Christian moral standards. They were not, in that respect, multiculturalists. They had a firm sense of right and wrong. I'm sorry. We're about to get into something different, but yes, I wanted to kind of like finish up that last topic on the slave trade, because we're about to get something else, into something else a little bit more inflammatory. Sally, go ahead. (laughs) I just wanted to remark upon their use of the word multiculturalist. Yeah, yeah. What? That doesn't mean, like, that doesn't fit the context of what they're saying at all. Yeah, can I, let me see this. I, being, okay, here's my thing. Sorry, I'm like, like, supportive of another, like, culture doesn't mean you're multicultural. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Okay, they saying they right. are not in that respect multiculturalists because they imposed Judeo, or not Im- imposed, they insisted on certain Judeo-Christian yeah, moral standards. Very polite. End of the slave trade, abolishing the slave trade. I don't know how that the major factor driving the expansion of the British Empire, that's just not true. Um, yeah, like, false. weren't conquering people to stop the slave trade. Uh, now, they did do diplomatic pressure on other countries to stop the slave trade, but I can't think of any particular conquests that were like, oh yeah, we did this to end the slave trade. Now, yeah. that would be a post facto, oh, they had slaves, so therefore we conquered. And it's like, mm-hmm. no, that was very rarely if ever the case also the whole idea of keeping the peace between previously warring tribes and religions sure however they initially to actually conquer those places they encourage that violence now afterwards yeah they enforced the pax britannica air quotes Mm -hmm. but putting down pirates it's like yeah sure headhunters i not to comment on that. Anyways, that's a whole another issue that would take a while. But mm. yeah, no. That's pretty much a good summary of this whole video. It's like, yeah, no. <laughs> I don't think yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. I don't like how they said keeping the peace when they had like no reason to be getting into this situation with these right. women's lives. It's yeah. not business. They didn't have to do that. And now they're mm-hmm. actually the glorious people who were the ones that came to the aid when they didn't need to. Yeah. Nobody asked for that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Of course, it wasn't just the English or England's fault, but like, for example, in North America, before the discovery, like, we actually have archaeological evidence that suggests that warfare was actually rather rare, or at least violent warfare, so it's more like ritual. In some parts, in Mexico, is a bit different, but um, yeah, so in North America, however, warfare dramatically increases after especially British colonies are set up and, and French colonies because they're basically playing tribes against each other as proxies for their wars. So yeah, like in, and that's a constant thing with the British Empire is basically divide and conquer and it's basically play people off of each other. You take one side, conquer the other, and then it's like, well, I now control you. Mm-hmm. And that's basically how the British Empire operates. So it doesn't really sound like keeping the peace. Yeah. Uh, keeping the peace after we've forcibly conquered them, yes. Yeah. Uh, but For sure. Okay, now we're going to kind of move into a different, like, specific cultural instance that Crocker wants to mention that I'm interested to hear your thoughts on. When Sir Charles Napier was confronted by the practice of suti, widow burning, in India, 
He told the Brahmin priests involved that he understood it was their custom. But the British had a custom too. They hanged men who burned women alive and their goods were confiscated. So if the Brahmins insisted on continuing their tradition of widow burning, then he would insist on following his British tradition of hanging the murderers of widows. Widow burning in India soon ceased. But we don't have to dig far in okay. American history after that. So um, what do you think about this widow burning situation? So he is correct to a degree. Uh, widow burning was a thing in India. However, not all widows were burned, like just to make that clear. The vast majority were not. It was very much an upper class thing and only in some parts of India. Nobly Hindu parts, but like not even, it wasn't even that widespread. Yes, he, if I remember correctly, Napier was the one who like confronted blah, 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 all, all of that. It's like, yes, that is true. However, if it's a wired misconception that sati was like a very common practice that was very widespread, you have hundreds of thousands of widows getting burned every year. And yeah, no, that's just not the case. Right. Like it, it was not that widespread. Now, it was a thing, and it's like, yes, it's good that the British thought that, but they shouldn't have been there in the first place. Right, yeah. Can we talk about, too, like, how this story is presented and this whole, like, narrative that Crocker is trying to give us, too? The reasoning behind why he would add something like this and present it in this way? Right, like, this is a very peaceful, like, we sat down and we had a conversation about Widow right. mm -hmm. And you're insisting that you should continue this practice but I am insisting, again with this, like, insist, if I had a dog yeah. that insists in this too, but, like, mm -hmm. again, it's very polite of, we're having a conversation about this, and I'm just going to forcefully insist that you stop this. We're not going to talk about any violence that may have been used. I say may because I, I don't really have a lot of, like, context besides this video for this period of history. It really give us a lot of context either, so... Yeah, mm -hmm. right. They're obviously just telling a very specific narrative of this was a peaceful transaction and we got it to stop through the power of words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were like, we understand your tradition, but it's wrong. So, right. <laughs> right. Totally, like throwing that out there. Yeah, just the audacity of these people to come into this country, conquer it, and then, you know, start... I mean, just obliterating their cultural traditions. Yeah, and I mean, this is all part of a larger narrative attempt to show un they're uncivilized. And yeah. like, it, it, and it's like, yes, it, don't get me wrong, widow burning bad. I mean, like, I don't think that's a controversial statement. However, like the idea that ah, oh, this is all the British Empire was doing. It's just it's, it's saving hel helpless widows, right. and it's just like, yeah, they also conquered. They killed millions of people. I, I mean, we're cherry picking again to like yes. further this kind of propaganda for the British Empire. So it's it's weird to me that I mean I know this happens like all the time, but every time I run into stuff like this where it's like these people are dead. What personal stake do you yeah. have in making the British Empire look good? Like I don't get yeah, that, part. that. This definitely feels like propaganda where they're picking out the worst to show everybody. Like, see, we're doing good things. Like everything's fine. Yeah. And and sorry, I I'm like totally in familiar with PragerU. This is like an American, yes. like pu publication, I guess. Not even not publication, so. but like a, a, no. They talk a, about American politics and stuff. Yeah, yeah. They talk about American, American. politics and stuff too. Okay, so. so basically, they're just pro-white people, is what I'm understanding. Um, yeah, as a general rule, yeah. Okay. Uh, Okay. Yeah, don't get me wrong. They they also justify American imperialism, but like yes. that's besides. Well, yeah. Well, that's what uh, I'm saying too. is it doesn't it, yeah. matter if you're European or American. You just have to be yeah. white. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, it's part of like a larger attempt on the right to like say Judeo well, Judeo Christian values. Europeans were good. I, I want to say they have a video on the Crusades, which they do. They do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like stuff like that. That's basically rewriting history to make it. It's to try and make people more comfortable and their donors. Um, so, so just to clarify, racist. Yes. Institution <laughs> to spread disinformation. Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. I just want to make sure everyone hears that. Racist 
disinformation. And right. as we're saying um, this, I'm very concerned about the take action tab on their website header. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. That's we a can. I don't want to click on. <laughs> It looks like mostly it's money. It's all, it's all about money. Okay. Oh, yeah. I don't want to see their petitions. I do want to see their petitions. I don't want to see their petitions. Let me do a tangent afterwards if your brains are still <laughs> somewhat intact. We can finish off your brain melting. Yeah. With that. Um, okay. I think the video goes into talking a little bit about America next, if I remember correctly. So got just a little over a minute left. <laughs> a minute and a half, maybe. Into history into the abolition of slavery and widow burning to find the British Empire on the side of moral right and freedom. We can think of events within our own lifetimes or those of our parents and grandparents. When we think of the two deadliest threats to freedom in the 20th century, we... I'm sorry, is freedom immortal? I just have to ask, because that seems to be coming up a lot. I didn't realize it's so threatened all the time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes no. Apparently freedom. freedom is mortal. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> genocide, communism, Fashion. and Nazism. Ah. How many remember that in 1940, after the Hitler Stalin Pact, and after the fall of France, one power, the British Empire, stood alone in mortal combat against the combined tyrannies of the world? Even where the British have merited criticism, as in Ireland. Uh, do you have something? That's okay. It. This is like. This is not an intellectual opinion, but using the phrase mortal combat, my mind immediately went to like, Germany are fighting and they both have health bars. <laughs> and also that's just very dramatic. Yes. <laughs> that's extremely dramatic. Correct. Um, not to say that World War II wasn't, you know, obviously a very dramatic event for many groups of people, but the phrasing there was a lot. Yeah. I, I'm kind of curious about where they're going with this. I think they, I know, but we'll see. Yes, I'll let, it, I'll let it play. Let's listen. There's more to the imperial story. During negotiations to create the Irish Republic, for instance, British Prime Minister David Lloyd George, who could speak Welsh, reminded the Irish nationalist and Gaelic extremist Eamon de Valera that the Celts never had a word for republic. It was an idea given to them by the English. Okay, just to summarize real fast, so we moved really quickly from freedom was threatened in World War II to talking about imperialism, the British, they colonized Ireland, I'm pretty sure, talking about how it was actually good because they didn't even have a word for republic until the British came, I think right. as a good summary. You all look very confused and distressed. Please so, share your I am distressed. I mean, that was definitely a weep to something else. I don't know where to start. Okay, World War II. I mean, they didn't really go that much into it. I mean, yeah, Nazis no. bad, Stalin bad. Y yeah, yeah, sure. Pretty basic. It, now, did Britain do the most of the allies to stop Nazis? No, but anyways. Yeah, and to, like, okay, to make this leap of we're going to talk about communism and Nazism as the two biggest threats of the 20th century, which, I mean, all right, but... But to make this leap to Ireland and Wales is a yeah. bit of a turn. Also, yeah. not a lot of people have context for that history because both of those places were colonized and their history has been erased in the narrative. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at least for some of these other things, people have the context to, I would hope, make their own decisions about what's being mm -hmm. presented in the video. But if you're someone who like doesn't really know a whole lot about like Irish and Welsh history, and I'm not going to say mm -hmm. that I'm an expert by any means, I just know the general gist, but you're going to be pretty convinced, so to speak, on whatever yes. you're saying or about to say, and that's troubling. Yeah, saying that the British did nice things for Ireland is... Wrong. Incorrect. <laughs> 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 well, okay, well, yeah, so... <laughs> There's just a lot going on there. I mean, like, we got the Irish potato family. No, don't get me wrong. The potato family was not caused by the British. It wasn't like some conspiracy theory. However, they definitely could have done a lot more to save more Irish people. Definitely. Yeah, like, there's even a story. I, basically, the old man Sultan is going to send food to Ireland, and, like, the British get received word of this, and they're like, okay, no, it has to be under this specific amount because that's how much the queen is giving. He can't give more than the queen. So basically, they stop them from receiving more food. Now, like, yeah. 
was that going to save tons of Irish rights? Probably not. But like, is an example of like the British just kind of being like, oh no, the, our Irish people are dying. No, oh, no. Of course, they conquered Ireland. I, I mean, there's just a lot going on here. Yeah, nothing in this video is my expertise. I do not know anything about British imperialism or anything. <laughs> but I can honestly tell you that I can tell this video is wrong in so many ways, just with like the word choices they're using and how they're like setting up the video. It makes me know that this is wrong and something about this is racist. <laughs> well, I also think it's, I, I think it's very telling that they have to leap around to so many different examples because they can't give enough context for one specific one, if that yeah. makes sense. Like, like they couldn't possibly make a five minute video just about the damage that they did to India. Mm -hmm. Because like that, I mean, it, it's just so telling that they, they won't go deeper into any of these examples that they're giving. They're going around all this information and they're playing the victim card and they're being the toxic person in this empire game of life. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah, and they're of course, they condensed a hundred years of British imperialism into, well, we stopped slavery and we stopped widows from being burned. And yeah. it's just like, I mean, yeah, both of those things are good. One of which, though, like, that was a problem you caused. And the <laughs> other one is just like, I mean, yeah, sure, that's good, but you also killed tens of thousands of people to take over India, caused endless wars in India. So... Yeah, no, like the British Empire doesn't have a moral standing like, well, we, we stopped the widow burning, so therefore we are good. And it's like, yeah. yes, that is a good thing you did, but like, it doesn't justify everything else. Also, you weren't conquering India because, oh no, those poor helpless widows, you were conquering right. because I want more tea and resources. No, that's very true. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can't. I can't wait to see how they end this thing. Like, yes. I can't wait to see how they wrap this up. Thirty also, seconds left. Two. We're in the home stretch. Do I, I do. Know. Like, like, how do you possibly finish this video? <laughs> what, what note do you end on? Like, I'm, so I, I, I'm sure it's not going to be anything negative, like the opium war, where they literally got the Chinese population <laughs> hooked on opium so they could make more money. I mean, like, certainly uh, not. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't think, I don't remember exactly, but it wasn't that, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Let's, let's finish it off. Let's see how they do. Oh my God. Our own history too. If you love America, you should also love the power that gave us our sense of inalienable rights. Rights traceable back to Magna Carta. It all started in America with the British Empire, a great liberty-loving empire. It is the empire's legacy the English-speaking world, there remains the great global guardian of freedom today. I'm H.W. Crocker for Prager University. All right. Whoa, okay. I feel like we have to go down to the transcript. Yes, Everything yes, hurt. Everything hurt. I'm, like, crying right now, trying to, like, not let myself laugh. Okay, yeah, right here. If you love America, you should also love the power that gives us our sense of inalienable life. That was kind of a great Abraham Lincoln image. <laughs> <laughs> God, everything. Oh, it his America with the British Empire, a great liberty loving empire. Clearly, they uh, love liberty so much. They just gave us this land. We didn't even yeah. have to fight them for it. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's like all our years of history erased because they actually <laughs> just were nice to us. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I do. It'd be oxymoron of like liberty loving and empire is really fun. It's so uh, funny. Right next to each other. <laughs> yeah. So very funny. Fun. Okay. I mean, Magna Carta. So, like, yeah, it's an important document, but saying that it's inalienable rights is. A bit rich like it was a document signed so nobles had more power i have a problem in general with history when like we take words and apply them to things that existed before that word existed so if okay. we're trying to say like inalienable rights traceable back to the magna carta like that mm, no i'm yeah. just gonna say no that's all i have to say yeah. <laughs> correct yeah. 
sure. There is a connection that is made between the Magna Carta of Declaration of Independence, blah, 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 blah. It, however, you should love the power that gave us our sense of inalienable rights. And it's like, th- there's just a lot going on there. It's basically making the argument that the primacy of Judeo-Christian Anglo-Saxon values in America is like what I'm getting from this, along with everything else. Yeah, so it's basically connecting also just English speaking. It's like Canada, America, Britain, uh, Australia, New Zealand, we're all just free and loving people because we are English speakers. Like, yes, like some of our modern institutions are modern rights or like, but yes, like there is a trace to the Magna Carta, like English common law, like that sort of stuff. However, to say that like the British Empire was a great liberty loving empire is just uh, nonsense i also i would like to draw attention to the ending line where it is the empire's legacy the english-speaking world that remains the great global guardian of freedom today this is an open acknowledgement that the institutions created by the british empire the sexist racist elitist institutions are still standing today. That is an open acknowledgement of that. The fact that they say it is the English speaking world's like responsibility to guard this freedom, this, this freedom, it's not freedom at all. What they're talking about, they're talking about racism, classism, sexism, disguised as freedom. That's what they're talking about. They're not talking about inalienable rights for everybody. They're talking about white people. And men. This line should be rewritten that white supremacy is the empire's legacy. And Absolutely. Like, we're going to stay here and make sure that we are the guardians of white supremacy. That's, yeah. that's all this line yeah. is. Yeah. And yeah. Like, basically, like to the earlier question of why do they care? It's basically within neoconservatism, there's basically this idea that America should be the new British Empire. Right. That basically, it fulfills the role of the guardian of liberty, um, air quotes, or guardian, guardian of freedom, all of that sort of stuff, policeman of the world, that sort of stuff. And it's that's the connection, is basically like American imperialism, just like British imperialism, is good. Yeah, I absolutely agree. So this is telling history like with a, a very clear agenda, as we can see, the way that he has spliced together these different stories and these different facts. He is, he is taking some facts, but he's presenting them in a way to make people comfortable with imperialism today and white supremacy today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's absolutely a manipulation of biased history. Absolutely, yes. I really, I just am drawn to this part in the paragraph that says, if you love America, because I, a couple of mm-hmm. recent episodes I've recorded, like, I talked about the 1776 Commission a little while ago, where conservative politicians are like, we need to love America, and kind of against the 1619 Project, like, we don't need to talk Mm -hmm. about history, people feel bad about America, and that sort of stuff, there's so much rhetoric in the world now about, like, we need to love America, and how we teach history is, is how we do that. And like, I think that's true. I think we can love America well by learning our history well, but not learning it in a way that like ignores all of the different flaws and all of the different issues mm-hmm. that has had and caused over the years. I don't know, what do you guys think about that? The connection with like patriotism and education and stuff too. Bit of a tangent, but like in high school, I think it was my sophomore year, I still remember like, I wanna say it was an Oklahoma congressman who wanted to get rid of AP U.S. history classes because they weren't teaching U.S. exceptionalism. Basically, there's this idea that we need to teach civic patriotism and you love your country, but no, not by like teaching actual history. Mm -hmm. And it's basically very anti-intellectual, and they want to teach a like Mm -hmm. simplified version of history. That's basically the only way I can really explain Yeah, I was just going to say, I think if you do truly love America, you have to acknowledge that our history is flawed. And you have to acknowledge that there are bad things about this country that were put in place a long time ago that still stand today. And if you actually do love America, you should want to see those things get better. And the the discipline of history, truthful pursuit of history, unlike what PragerU has shown us today, is one very tangible way of, of doing that. 
Mm -hmm. You want to show that you were at a bad place and you grew as like a country and you are now a much better place based on the past. And you also don't want to erase history and you physically can't Mm -hmm. call yourself a historian if you're ignoring certain parts. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is maybe a little off topic from the question you posed, Adelaide, but the phrasing of if you love America, you should also love the power, you know, i.e. Great Britain there's a sense of entitlement there like Mm -hmm. america owes england something which is strange and also like very contradictory to i think what we all know is like the american narrative of u.s history that you've learned you know since primary school which is like england bad america good we defeated england and we showed them who's boss I'm not saying that's correct, that it's very incorrect, but (laughs) it's a little strange, like, now, like, if America is this, like, child, so to speak, because, like, that's the the way U.S. history is framed to students. Yes. Mm -hmm. That, like, we've somehow grown up, and now we get to, you know, be at the dinner table with all the other adults, and it's very strange of now we should respect Britain. No, I'm not going to do that, (laughs) frankly, I'm sorry. (laughs) <laughs> the phrasing of that is there's a lot wrong there yes i think it's just a way of them to unite white people once again to go back to um white supremacy there's i mean they're not saying i mean they are saying respect the british empire because it you know gave us all of our ideas for white supremacy but they are it is this is just another way for them to unite white people together under the guise of freedom that is actually white supremacy yeah yeah and then it, it leads from that too that that telling history in this way is, is really disrespectful to Americans of color, people of color in general that have suffered at the hands of the British Empire. Um, mm-hmm. It's a way to to retell their history. I think that's what I've noticed a lot with Prager U videos is that, I mean, with all of the problems with them, one of the biggest problems that I have is that they're not taking into account people today that are trying to wrestle with this history, um, who've been the victim mm-hmm. of this history. And it's just so disrespectful to to people of color to to kind of like approach history in this way and a very like, mm-hmm. to, to continue to support white supremacy obviously is, is a terrible and to not acknowledge it as well throughout history as well in our own time, problem as well. And yeah, absolutely. to say our sense of inalienable rights, who do you mean our? Right. Are you talking about white Americans and white British people? Are you talking about the people of the world? Because, oh, buddy. <laughs> As we've said many times in this podcast, our does not correspond to everyone in yeah. the globe. Absolutely. I know this has been a very uh, depressing time and you'll probably never come on my podcast. <laughs> such a horrible time um <laughs> but i am really thankful that like you know none of us are experts on this stuff and we're able to go through this video and and perceive the way the ways that they've done things wrong and also like why it's wrong that ability that we're learning from our professors and just at this university and also just the ability to explain that to other people is really powerful and really important so i appreciate all the hard work that you guys are doing and, and just the knowledge that you bring to this even without having your phd in the history of the british empire Thank you. Well, we so much admire you for, you know, doing this podcast and um, we think you're really awesome and very good at what you do. So we very much admire you as well. Yeah, I was so excited to come Um, on here and just hang out with you guys. (laughs) And it was so so fun too. I'm glad. (laughs) Yeah, I don't think I have any brain cells left, but I think (laughs) we had a lot of good discussions, which... yeah. For sure, like, for sure. Obviously, the subject matter, you know, isn't fun to discuss by any means, but it's an incredibly necessary thing to discuss, and yeah. it is better when you do it with a community, I guess. Yeah, I think so, too. For and sure. I think it's important that we are having these very open and honest conversations about the subject matter, like, in, you know, our everyday lives. I think that's yeah. necessary if we do want, you know, th- this discipline to improve. Well, do you guys have any last thoughts? Prager U is bad don't trust them on basically anything. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's my final thought too. Prager you bad. Prager you bad. Please don't donate to Prager you. No. Please don't click any oh, of no. those tabs that say take action. You should take action against Prager you. <laughs> <Eggs out. laughs> Correct. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Adelaide, for having yeah. us. This is very fun. Mm-hmm. I'm glad. I'm glad you guys um, enjoyed it. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.
So that's all I've got for you guys. Thank you so much for sleuthing with me today. And thanks again to the OU History Club officers for letting me melt your brains for content. You guys are truly wonderful and I love learning more about history with you. If you're curious about this topic, want to watch this video for yourself, or want to follow all of my guests on Twitter, I've linked everything in the description for you. Don't forget to follow History Sleuth on Twitter and wherever you get your podcasts so that you don't miss the next episode. I hope you have a great day. Bye.